Not too long ago, I got a call from a friend of mine. Now, my friend is a non-resident alien individual, right? So it means he's not a U.S. citizen or resident or green card holder or anything like that. And he had a tax question for me. And his question was this. I own a significant amount of shares in a publicly traded U.S. company that I own through a brokerage account in the United States. I'm thinking about selling these shares. What are my tax implications? And so I figured that this is probably a question that a lot of people have given the fact that 80% of portfolios, 80% throughout the world have U.S. stocks. And a lot of those portfolios belong to non-resident alien individuals. So I decided to create this video, Taxation of Non-Resident Alien Investors in U.S. Stocks. Let's get started. So first off, let's define who a non-resident alien is. A non-resident alien is an individual who is not a U.S. citizen, is not a permanent resident or green card holder, and who does not meet the substantial presence test. Now, the substantial presence test is a test where you can become a U.S. tax resident simply by spending too much time in the United States, regardless of your visa status. Now, the way this is calculated is, first you determine how many days that you spent in the United States during the current year. If it's 31 days or more, then you have to look at the last two years. So you would count a third of the days in the prior year and a sixth of the days in the year before that. And if the total number of days, the combination of those three numbers equals 183 or more, congratulations, you've become a U.S. tax resident and you are taxed just as if you were a U.S. citizen or green card holder. If you like our content, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. And for more strategic tips on international tax and wealth planning, subscribe to our email list and follow me on LinkedIn. Links below. Everybody else is a non-resident alien. So these are foreign nationals that are not U.S. citizens, not green card holders, and have not met the substantial presence test. This is the vast majority of foreigners are non-resident alien individuals. So how are non-resident individuals taxed on their capital gains from U.S. stocks? A lot of people are surprised to learn they're not. Meaning non-resident alien individuals can buy and sell U.S. stocks, make as much capital gain as they want without being liable for any U.S. income tax. The only exception to this is if the shares that they own in the U.S. corporation, if that corporation is classified as what's called a U.S. real property holding corporation, which is a company that basically just owns a lot of U.S. real estate. But that's a very minority of the companies. I think most of the stuff we're talking about are publicly traded U.S. securities. And in that case, there's going to be no U.S. capital gains taxes on the capital gains earned by non-resident alien individuals on the sale of the U.S. stocks. They're not even required to file a tax return to report the capital gains. Obviously, my friend was ecstatic to learn this. What about dividends received from U.S. stocks owned by non-resident aliens? Well, those are subject to U.S. income tax, even if they're held through a foreign brokerage account. Now, this isn't the way income tax is typically administered, where you receive the income and then you file a tax return and you pay the tax. Rather, this is a withholding tax, right? So let's say you're earning $1,000 in dividends from your U.S. stock holdings. Brokerage would be required to withhold 30% because that's the default withholding rate and pay that over to the IRS. And then you would get the remaining $700. Now, that 30% is non-refundable. That's just gone. The 700 is what you're left with. Now, that 30% withholding rate can be reduced, often down to 15%, in some cases zero, through an applicable U.S. tax treaty. So it's really important if you own U.S. stocks and you're receiving dividends, look and see if there's a tax treaty between your home country, your country of residence, and the United States to see if that tax treaty reduces the withholding tax to below 30%. If so, file an updated W-8 with your brokerage, and that should then reduce the withholding tax down to the treaty rate. If proper withholding was not done, meaning that whoever's holding your account, like a U.S. brokerage firm, for example, fails to do the withholding, then you need to file a tax return to report what withholding you should have paid and pay it. If proper withholding was done, you do not need to file a U.S. income tax return to report your U.S. dividend income. Foreigners are also usually very happy to learn that they can gift U.S. stocks tax-free whomever they want. So you can freely transfer the stock during your lifetime as a gift to friends, family, whoever you may want to give a gift of your U.S. stock to. The same does not hold true, however, if you die owning your U.S. stocks. 
So for U.S. estate tax purposes, U.S. stocks, even if held through a foreign brokerage account, are considered U.S. property and are subject to the U.S. estate tax. And the way the U.S. estate tax is calculated is based on the fair market value of your U.S. assets, including U.S. stocks. So what we would need to do is look at the fair market value of your U.S. stocks including stocks and private corporations. We need to calculate the fair market value. Then whatever that fair market value is, we would reduce by $60,000 because this is the state tax exclusion that non-resident aliens are entitled to. So let's say, for example, we had a portfolio of $2 million. So we would reduce that by 60,000. So now we have a taxable estate of 1.94 million, and that would be subject to US estate tax at rates up to 40%. So if you don't properly plan your U.S. stock holdings and you die owning them individually, you could face a significant U.S. tax bill, almost half of the value of your portfolio. Estate tax can be very easily avoided by owning them through a foreign corporation or a properly structured foreign trust. So I always advise my non-resident alien individual clients who own U.S. stocks or are planning on investing in U.S. stocks or other U.S. assets for that matter, to not own them individually. The estate tax can be a killer. You didn't work that hard to have the IRS take the money, belongs to your heirs. Structure it properly. It's so easily avoidable with a properly structured trust or a corporation. We help people do it all the time. And then finally, what is the tax on the transfer of US stocks to an entity? So let's say, for example, you made the mistake of buying US stocks individually, and now you wanna transfer them to some sort of an entity to avoid the estate tax like a foreign company or a foreign trust. Well, good news, you can transfer them to any type of entity completely tax-free during your lifetime. That's really good news because unlike US real estate where transferring them from an individual ownership into a company or trust can cause tax consequences, that is not the case with US stocks. I hope you've enjoyed this video. We have been helping foreign investors in U.S. stocks reduce or eliminate their U.S. taxes for almost two decades. We would welcome the opportunity to show you what we can do. You can contact us at info at or www.esquiregroup.com. Thank you.